Welcome back students to Chemistry 1510 video notes. We're going to continue with chapter 5 with the combined gas law. So up here at the top I have three different laws, Boyle's, Charles, and Gay-Lussac's. But I'm actually going to start with the one in the middle, which is the combined gas law. So the combined gas law is pressure volume 1 multiplied and then divided by temperature 1. And then in a second situation pressure and volume 2 will be multiplied and then divided by temperature too. And so pressure, volume, and temperature are all related to one another. Now pressure is the pressure that the, exas the gas is exerting, temperature is the temperature of the system, and volume is the amount of space that gas is taking up. And that might uh, change, like in a balloon, or it could be something that doesn't change, like if the gas is in a metal canister. So What's going to happen is if we know the combined gas law, we can actually generate these other three laws from that. So let's imagine that we have the combined gas law, but T temperature is constant. If T is constant, then what you do is you just kind of mentally ignore the temperature down here. And so now you have P1V1 equals P2V2. So we used the combined gas law, we ignored the temperature, and got Boyle's law. Let's see. So then we're going to do the same thing with Charles' law. We're going to take the combined gas law. Pressure is constant in this case. And so we're going to leave the pressure out of the combined gas law and write the remaining variables. And then finally, in Gay-Lussac's law, volume is constant. So again, I'm kind of mentally looking at the combined gas law and I'm leaving out the volume variable. to get Gay-Lussac's law. So as we start to employ these different laws, what you're going to need to do is make sure that a couple of your units stay in one spot. What I mean by that is it is imperative that if you're using a temperature that we're um, measuring in kelvins, these calculations actually don't work in Celsius and Fahrenheit. They only work with Kelvin, and that's really fascinating, um, and if you want to know more about that, then uh, go ahead and look in your textbook or Google search that uh, to see a little bit more of why that is. And then for your volume, you could either have your measurements be in liters or milliliters. For pressure, you can have any unit. So let's add pressure in here. So pressure can be anything, volume needs to be liters or milliliters, and temperature is the one where we have to be careful. Let's look at two examples. So the first one, we're given a pressure and we're given a volume. And it's asking us what pressure uh, will change this volume to about half of the original one. So sometimes what can be difficult is figuring out which equation to use. And so what you might choose to do is to write out your combined gas law and then just kind of take notice of what you have. We are given an initial pressure. We're given an initial volume. We're asked what our pressure will be at the end and we're given a final volume. So we do not need temperature because we're assuming that the temperature has been held constant due to the fact that it isn't mentioned here. So we're actually using Boyle's law. Now, do we need to know that this is Boyle's law? Not necessarily. We can get away without knowing that P1V1 equals P2V2 is Boyle's law, but we definitely need to know that those are the variables that are present in this problem. So one of the things that we want to do is we always want to start by writing our equation. 
So this was just kind of me mentally showing you off to the side which equation we were going to use. So now I'm just going to rewrite my equation and make it look good. Now it's asking you what your pressure will be at the end, and so that means we're solving for P2. So I'm going to rearrange this so that P2 is on its own side. So now I can take these and start to put the um, different numbers in. So P1 is given at 740 Tor. Our V1 is given at 880 milliliters. And then our V2 is given at 440 milliliters. So we love that our units are canceling. And when we finish this problem, we'll see that P2 is equal to 1,480 Tor. Let's make sure to watch our significant figures here. We should have three. So let's look at another one. In this problem, we are given the fact that we have a volume to start with, a pressure to start with, and a temperature to start with. What is the pressure in atmospheres? So this is what we're searching for. If the volume was raised and the temperature also increased. So in this case, we are absolutely using the combined gas law because we have all of those variables. So what you might want to do is practice your algebra here, rearranging, because we want to get P2 by itself. If we want to get P2 by itself, it means that we need to get rid of V2 and T2 and so in order to do that, you end up multiplying by the reciprocal so that your T2s cancel, your V2s cancel, and now your P2 is alone. So now that we have P2 alone, let's plug in some values. So our P1 was given to us with the 745 Tor. Our V1 was given to us as oops, 950 meters cubed. Do you remember how earlier we said that these need to be in a liter or milliliter? Well, a cubic meter is a volume unit as well, so this is perfectly appropriate. And then our 25 degrees Celsius needs to be changed to Kelvin, and so does our 60 degrees Celsius. So T2 is your 60 degrees Celsius, and when we change 60 degrees Celsius to Kelvin, it's 333.2 Kelvin. And then we'll put in our temperature too at the bottom. So that is going to be 298. And our volume too at the bottom as well. So we put all that in our calculator, noticing that our units are canceling. And when we get it, we get about 688. And mind you that that's in TOR because that's the pressure unit we put in to begin with. If we don't want it to be in TOR because the question asked us for atmospheres, then what we need to do is a quick conversion. So if our pressure is in TOR and we want to convert to atmospheres, remember that there are 760 TOR in one atmosphere. So we need to take our 688 and divide it by 760 to get 0 0.905 ATM as our final answer. Great, that's enough of the combined gas law. We'll pause here and come back with the ideal gas law in another video. As always, thanks for your attention. This is Katoni, signing out.